Hey everyone, hope you're doing great. We're continuing our overall book review for the book club and overall textual analysis of these wonderful stories compiled of Native American oral tradition. Now it's the written tradition because it's written down. So this is from the Cheyenne tribe. I have heard a lot about the Cheyenne tribe and it's really interesting to get to know them through books but this will be even cooler to get to know them through some of their stories all right this is called the double face ghost there was a ghost who was immensely tall with arms and legs of colossal length he had two faces one looking forward and one looking backward I've seen some uh, really strange masks like that some Greek masks but it had one in the front, one on the side, and one on this side. It's quite weird. <laughs> and for this reason, he was called the Double-Faced Ghost. He was not too bad for a ghost. That is, he was so big that he could step over the widest rivers and over hills, too. He was also a mighty hunter, since he could catch any game that came in his sight with his wonderfully long arms. But in spite of his talents, Double-Face was not happy because he could not find himself a suitable wife. So, here in their lore, like a ghost still wants a wife. That's quite strange. One day, he came upon a tent standing all by itself in the middle of the prairie. In it lived a man, his wife, and their daughter, who was young and beautiful. Hiding behind a hill, the double-faced ghost saw the girl from afar and immediately fell in love with her. He said to himself, I must have her for my wife. Of course, she might not want me, and her father too might think, that she and I are ill-matched. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're a dad and you're like, you're gonna marry a ghost? I mean, there are some pretty strange people who were in Japan who married their video game holograms. I've also seen people, uh, a lot of weird things going on with robots. So, I mean, a ghost compared to a robot, you know, a robot which is cold and dead and even if you can heat it up, it's, I don't know why, but a lot of the Asian countries now are really merging with robots in these strange ways. I've seen some very strange machines and it's dystopic. So <laughs> me and her father too might think that she and I are ill matched so I just started by supplying this family with so much good fat meat that they see what a fine husband I'd make. Notice this, so the ghost here, he still has the craving for women. He wants to marry, he's lonely, interesting and wants to present meat with a lot of marble on it, a lot of marbleization. So a lot of vegan left hippies try to infantilize, infantilize Native Americans as grass-eating, uh, pipe-smoking hippies in the mountains who didn't do anything all day. But here again, meat was a component of the culture, so was hunting, right? They were not subsisting on grass. The ghost went hunting and caught a lot of game with his long arms. So if you have a Native American who likes to hunt today, a other person who is more liberal will call them an evil person for hunting because they didn't go to the supermarket and buy some fake meat made in a lab. So when you read stories like this, it really takes out the sort of hippie brainwashing that you get in a lot of schools with some female teachers who are like into patchouli and burning man and are a little bit strange they tend to kind of romanticize the tribal people as these really just like frail people but no it's not the case every morning in the darkness before dawn he brought a great load of meat and left it in front of the teepee look at that he brought a lot of meat another emphasis on meat here so, remember that saying, bring home the bacon? Well, a ghost here is trying to get a living wife and is presenting meat and living it in front of her teepee. I think that's quite interesting. The parents and the girl were delighted and wondered what hunter was giving them all this fine red meat. Red meat, not tofu. Not kale. The father said, I must find out who is doing us this kindness. But he never caught a glimpse of the double-faced ghost. Yet, morning after morning, there was a new load of meat stacked up before the teepee. 
More than three people could eat. Even the dogs also had their fill. At last, the father dug himself a hole behind a clump of bushes, crept into it on a moonlit night, and stayed awake to watch. Okay, moonlit night, he's going to keep an eye out for the double-faced ghost. Before dawn, he saw the double-faced ghost come, leave his load of meat and go away. To the man went back to his family. Trembling with fear, he told his wife and daughter to strike the tent and pack up because it was a terrible monster who had been bringing the meat. <sighs> oh, it's like, get the tent and pack up. They could really do that with their teepees. This is very mobile. The three got away as fast as they could, and the next morning, Double Face found the tent gone. He waited until it was lighter, then followed their tracks. Ah, see that? So they left. They didn't cover their tracks. With his long legs, he soon overtook them. Ah, see that? So he's tall. He's got a longer stride. Wait, wait, good people, Double Face shouted. I mean you no harm. I have only kind feelings toward you. And a few more strides, he came level with the fleeing family. Stop, stop, he cried. Let's sit down and talk. <laughs> Could you imagine? Just like, they'd be freaking me out. I'd be like, no. You brought good meat, though. Next time, bring a little bit of salt, but uh, we gotta go. What could the three people do? Though very much afraid, they sat down. The ghost towered over them. You were kind to leave all that meat, the man said, but what do you want from us? I am in love with your daughter, said the double-faced one. I want her for a wife. Naturally, the father was not willing to give her to the ghost, and the daughter would not have gone if her father had asked it. After all that, what girl wants a husband ten times taller than she? <laughs> That's interesting. The height dynamic here. Because remember, he's really big, so he can go over the widest rivers, as we were told, over the biggest hills. But not only that, something with two faces, it's like, which one do you look at when you're talking to it, right? With one face looking forward and one backward? On the other hand, the father did not want to make this giant angry. So, he said, you are indeed kind and handsome and a mighty hunter too. Who wouldn't want a man like you for his daughter's husband? What daughter wouldn't be happy to have you? Now I'm sure you know the custom of my people in such matters. What custom? asked the double-faced ghost. Well, we always play hide the plum pit. If the suitor wins, he gets the girl. If he doesn't, give something of value. Really, said the ghost? I never heard of this custom. It sounds unusual. <laughs> See, <laughs> like the ghost is saying like that sounds unusual when his mere existence is what is unusual, right? Not at all, said the father. We've had it since the world began, and we must stick to it or suffer great misfortunes. Traditionalism. So Native Americans being very traditional, not very progressive and wanting to shake up their traditions. Very conservative, then, these tribes. You're a wise and accommodating man, said the father. As I said, if you win, I'll give you my daughter. Now, this is interesting because you get into a lot of the female roles here. You get a lot into traditional female roles, men getting married. It didn't say a commune where you can swap your partner with whoever you want and just lay out in the grass humping all day like bonobos. Um, indeed, the Native American culture was more sophisticated than that. You wouldn't get that from some perspectives on the tribes, but they were. We must also, with these stories, you must remember that they are very insightful for the way things were thought of. Not with the way students who've grown up in America on the internet think of cartoonish images of tribal people, right? But if you lose, you will go on leaving a pile of meat for us in the morning, though maybe only every other day. <laughs> hey, look at that. It's getting that meat in. I'm gonna have to go shopping. Just kidding. I have to go hunting. What the double-faced ghost didn't know was that the father was the best hidden plumpet player in the world. They played, the father's hands were so quick that the ghost could not follow them and locate the pit. On top of that, the girl and her mother drummed and sang funny songs which distracted him. <laughs> so the father won easily. Double-faced ghost accepted his laws and went on bringing meat as long as the people lived, even after the daughter married. As I said, he wasn't bad for a ghost. So look at that. That's uh, from a tale reported by Alfred L. Crowbear in 1900s. So the double-faced ghost, look at that, he wasn't as evil as we thought. He wasn't two-faced. Because get it, double-faced, two-faced, for us means like, you do one thing and do the opposite. You got two faces. Here, the ghost, he keeps giving me even though he lost. And uh, even when she gets married, 
it doesn't make him change and start hating her. So that's interesting. The dad is actually a very cool figure because he reasons with the ghosts and then is able to outwit a ghost. So the father is more of a figure character in this story. <laughs> oh, that's amazing.